My name is Professor Leonard Funk. I'm a consultant shoulder and upper limb surgeon and uh, professor of orthopedics and sports medicine. And I'll be telling you a little bit about frozen shoulder. Frozen shoulder is also known as adhesive capsulitis. It is one of the most painful conditions of the shoulder and the key features are pain and stiffness of the shoulder. It tends to be in people in their 30s, 40s and 50s, um, usually comes on with no history of any particular injury, although people may mention an associated injury around that time. You do get a secondary frozen shoulder, which does follow an injury, but that's known as a secondary frozen shoulder. Essentially, the management is roughly the same. The key feature of a frozen shoulder, other than the severe pain, is the inability to move the arm. So patient, people have problems lifting their arm up on its own and turning it out to the side is very difficult as well. Essentially, the cause of primary frozen shoulder is unknown. It tends to be associated with diabetes and Dupuytren's contractures, which are finger contractures of the hand. And those are the two associated um, features. The pathology, when we look under a microscope, is also very similar to Dupuytren's contracture. And we believe there's a strong association between the two. If we look at the shoulder joint itself here, you can see what happens to the lining of the joint, which is this pink lining or the capsule of the shoulder, that becomes scarred and reddened and inflamed. And when we look in the shoulder joint itself, we can see this very inflamed, reddened, very painful tissue, which scars up and tightens up the joint. It can be treated without surgery, and the initial treatments tend to be physiotherapy aimed at gradually trying to improve the range of movement, managing the pain control, and also doing some exercises to maintain the joint and, and relax the muscles around the joint. Pain can be controlled with anti-inflammatories, which not only help the pain, but they reduce the inflammation and the swelling in the joint, and also other painkillers um, in addition to the anti-inflammatories, which can help with pain control. And these should be used regularly in association with physiotherapy. If required, uh, steroid injections directly into the joint are often helpful as well, and these can be done at the discretion of your clinician and can be repeated up to generally a maximum of three times. If this isn't working, a procedure known as orthographic hydrodilatation can be performed. This is generally done under x-ray control, as you can see over here, um, where dye is inserted into the shoulder joint, and the joint is gradually expanded a little bit, hopefully to try and stretch out that capsule, and then a steroid can be injected directly into the place it needs to be within the shoulder joint. And we've had very good results and very high success rates with this procedure. There are surgical options as well for the resistant frozen shoulders. These are either a manipulation under an anesthetic, a capsular release, so a cutting of the capsule under an anesthetic, which can be done generally by keyhole surgery these days, but also via small open operations. Both operations are generally performed as day case procedures under a general anesthetic. If you have a manipulation, you won't have any surgical scars, but you will probably have a steroid injection as well. If you have a capsular release, as you can see in the image over here, then uh, you will have two surgical scars, maybe three, where the instruments are inserted here on the left and the right. 
to release the capsule. There are disadvantages and advantages to both procedures and these need to be discussed with your surgeon um, in advance of the surgery. As with all surgery, there are risks associated with any surgical intervention and these should also be discussed and will be discussed with you by your consultant surgeon. After the surgery, it's important to get the joint moving immediately, straight away, and usually that involves physiotherapy on the day of surgery and then very shortly thereafter. Pain control is absolutely essential and it's very important that painkillers are taken regularly with anti-inflammatories. It does take time to fully recover from the procedure and again this will be discussed with you in advance of the surgery. Risk of recurrence is extremely low but there is a slightly higher risk of you getting a frozen shoulder on the other shoulder if you've had it on the one side. For more information please see the website shoulderdoc.co.uk Go to the patient information section, click under shoulder for frozen shoulder or click on the link below.